everybody. Welcome to a special video podcast version of the JHS show. It's going to be a deep dive into the complete, I dare say, unabridged history of the rat. It's not for the faint of heart. There's never been anything like this done. Uh, it's a reflection of about 10 years of work and my observation of no less than 100 physical rat petals that I've studied. Um, and it reflects a photo web history essay. There's a link in the description. You can go read that. It is a massive, huge work that took our entire team to pull off. Uh, it involved interviews and just and just everything you can imagine. It's crazy. We took rats apart for several years between 2018 and now, to be specific, to release the pack rat. So this is a celebration of the pack rat, but it's mostly a celebration of Proco, the amazing story of several people, the invention of the rat, and where we are in 2021 and uh, it's going to be good. We're going to go through them. We're going to play the most rare things, things that you can't find. We're not going to bother demoing like a rat reissue. Or it's, it's pointless. We're not going to demo stuff that you can hear anywhere else. Um, that's it. I think we're going to roll right into it. How you guys doing? Good. Excellent. I'm excited about this. Yeah. What were the interviews? Like, we just got back. We did. We just got back from Kalamazoo. We interviewed six eight. or eight people. Eight people. Uh, who worked at Proco at one time or another, and boy, howdy, did they have stories. They did. They had lots of good stories, and I have a whole new appreciation. I've already yeah. been a self-proclaimed fan of the rat. You're an actual, like, true rat fan. Oh, yeah. Because you're multi-instrumentalist, and you're just rat, like, all the time on I everything. I love the rat. Yeah. But um, getting to know the people behind the rat mm. was especially cool. And it's more fun than the pedal. Yeah. That's what's fun about this. Yeah. People are cooler than pedals. Fact. How about you? What was the trip like for you? It was really fun. I loved getting to meet the people. I'm a rat convert very recently. I've been like on the climb. You're a train. rat vert? I'm a rat vert. <laughs> I, I like that because yeah. I got my first rat. It's a I got it years ago. I think two thousand two or three. Um, and then I've been a pretty steady user. I'm an I'm an addict. I'm a rat addict. And then you have always just like Loved it since the All American, yeah. probably. And then you have been skeptical. Yes. I mean, yeah. you've been around here for a bit now. Right. Yep. And so, how did this like affect you? Yep. It started uh, for me just stuff we've been working on music using like rat plugin from UAD, the raw. Uh, and then you let me borrow a rat. I think it was probably last week. Yeah, it was after our trip. We came home. I plugged it in. And I was like, whoa, this is fantastic. And today, for the first time, I plugged it in on bass. And I think I have a new overdrive distortion circuit for bass yeah. that may take the place of a clone. So you've got a the pack rat over yes, there on the yes, bass. Yes, I do. Yep. Um, a lot of people don't know, it is such a versatile box. The first studio uses I ever saw, Paul Moak said, I use it on vocals all the time. And then I realized, oh, that's been a thing. For, yep. Like yeah. he got it from other yeah. people. Drum overheads, very famous use. Vocals, it's, a, yeah. it's like, that's the main spot. Yep. Uh, and then you get into the plugins and yep. you start playing with it. And a lot of people don't realize the Pulp and Peel, when we did the 500 series, the approach there was like, I'm a big fan of like the sound toys, the capitator mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. And we put the rat distortion circuit in the Pulp and Peel. It's been in there forever. People just don't notice that. I think you guys have an episode. We, gonna... we may or may yeah. not have something cooking. Um, but yeah, it's like such yeah. a great bass yes. circuit because of yes. how the low pass filter works yep. and just the way the clipping works. It's very yep. unique. But yeah. we're like, we're coming fresh out yeah. of like a rat-tastic journey. Like Ooh, we've been yeah. deep into it. Yeah. Very deep. I've never been so deep into a subject, which says a lot. Yeah. Uh, um, this is truly 10 years of the the acquisition and collection, um, partnering. There's another co collector named Dana we were able to photograph and with the employees' prototypes. I mean, I have spreadsheets that are insane. I have um, just, like, just crazy stuff, like, like crazy people stuff. Yeah. Um, just graphs and... Like, it, it wasn't enough to simply play them. I wanted to get, like, I'm really tired of shootouts. Right, right. And I'm really tired, as you can tell, if you watch the show, like, I want to prove stuff. I think there's, there's like, a validity and a really great honor to these amazing pedals to actually break them down, scientific control, talk about the circuits, why do they work, and get rid of these myths. Um, there's yeah, so totally. many young players that... Just so many myths. So at the end of this, we're going to bust a few myths, at least three, 
And I think that's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all good? I'm Ready. so excited. Hopefully you're good. And and like I said, this is the kind of episode you can wash the dishes, put the headphones on. Yeah. It's going to be a long one. And uh, I guess the best place to start is the rat comes about in 77 or 78. Um, I'll get into that in a minute. But the rat is because, firstly, because of one man named Charlie Wicks. I have a photo of Charlie here. Um, this is a, That is an amazing <laughs> picture. Wow. This is an ad... Turbo era, so it's post-89. Let's just say 90, whatever. That's what it looks like. That's Charlie. Um, a lot of times when you open a rat, you'll see a message that says Captain of the Universe. Well, Captain of the Universe was Charlie's moniker. A marketing guy came in, and they started calling him that, and his business card said it. That picture represents what we've learned about yes. Proko. It says it yes, all. it the, really does. <laughs> I just want to keep staring at <laughs> it's this picture. Amazing. Yeah. I gotta ask: Did he come up with Captain of the Universe, or did someone call him that? I'm not. Do you know? I, I think you know through the discussions, Candy, the building supervisor, they kind of talked about there was this period where they knew they were different, mm -hmm. and sometimes hippie is like a negative yeah, term, right. but they were like truly free of yeah. all the like business bullcrap. Right. Right. And they ran this business. And this Charlie was a genius. He was a brilliant marketer. He was brilliant at customer service, and 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 I think there just came this point of like maybe that was his nickname, and that's that they brought in a marketing person to help facilitate who they were, and he became officially captain of the universe. Yeah. So it's that's pretty cool. Name. So it Charlie, really cool. there was a place called the Sound Factory, and the Sound Factory is there in Kalamazoo. So this photo is on Kalamazoo Avenue, I think that's what it's called, Street or Avenue, and. Um, basically, it was an old ice factory or something like that. And then it's a pretty big building. That's the only photo I can find. It's That's like amazing. when you're you're desperately trying to find this yeah. stuff. Um, the sound factory was like a... It was like, if you watch Parks and Rec, it's like it's the a, Entertainment yeah. 720 of, <laughs> right, right. of music. It's a conglomerate. So upstairs, there's a studio called Dirty... Dirty something. I don't know. I mean, there's tons yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Sistech, which uh -huh. is a famous pedal company in some regard, is there. You have uh, Guitar Luthers. You have uh, Charlie Wicks had a music store in there. Yeah. Just a ton of stuff. I think it was multiple, multiple businesses. And that place goes bankrupt. And I just want to show this again. So Charlie, yep. <laughs> Charlie, the next day, I believe it's a bankruptcy. Yeah. You know, they shut yep. that whole thing down. And he says, I'm starting... Proco Sound Inc. Today, we're going to make cables that are better than everybody's cables. They were the first cables to put heat shrink on the end. No, that's how crazy. simple is that? Yeah. That is such a simple thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, microphone cables, snakes, stage boxes, studio panels. Yeah, uh, and I think the biggest start of the engine was they had this brilliant cabinet designer builder. And if you're familiar with sound systems, they've changed a lot. You know, now we have like the Behringer XR98 that right. fits in your pocket. <laughs> well, back then it was like, here's a friggin' cab that's the size of me mm -hmm. that you need to power with an amp. And you, you know, they partnered with JBL, I believe, or EV, one of those companies. Okay. And they made these cabinets and they were like a regional famous cabinet, like mm -hmm. a Midwest famous thing. So Proco started 74. There are a few people employed with Charlie a lot. There's the, um, what were the girls' names? They called themselves C the Cable, Cable Queens. Cable Queens, yep. which yeah. is a group of women who are amazing. Um, we'll share, like, there will be stuff. You'll see this stuff later in the years. We'll do we'll do a big rat kind of expose, like a bio or something. But yeah. and then there's two engineers primarily who are very important. One of the engineers is named Steve. This is an older photo of him. Again, just yeah. killing it with the photos. They invented, I believe, the first like Cat Five uh, snake. Yeah, I think that. I think that's what we're seeing here. I don't know the term. I don't know a lot about the Proco right, right. catalog, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is Steve Corelli. Uh, this is well into the 90s uh he was much more woodstocky when they started you'll see yeah, that right. in this picture so that's steve steve was referred to as uncle steve and always forgotten he like always got shifted around in the story although he's like this undercurrent of genius yeah um everybody spoke very like high. every okay. time they mentioned uncle steve it was with so much adoration and like you know it was beautiful yeah it was yeah, really yeah. sweet and then there's another guy, Scott Burnham. This is him 
my assumption is this is probably 72, 73. This is like uh, Sound Factory days. Scott Burnham's a guitar player, and he's also a brilliant mind engineer, genius guy. I'm a huge fan of this man. And he, you know, the story's always been he does this, and Steve was a guitarist. Kind of the DOD story, which is like, David's yeah, a right. nerd and John Johnson's like make me an overdrive and then they the two combine as yeah. superheroes kind of like Pedal the Musical you right. saw the narrative this wasn't like this it was actually Scott really did design the rat Steve is also a friend they're both modding amps they have like a fairly I don't know if famous is the right word I don't know all the details but they're known around the area to mod out in hot rod amps Yeah, they're modding fuzz faces distortion pluses you know, they're doing all this stuff. And Scott Burnham, this is Scott at his desk. He's doing some accounting or something. I can't remember what this picture is. But this is the look. You know, this is this is yeah. era-ish appropriate, late 70s Scott Burnham. And he said, you know, I can do a better distortion box than these yeah. things. The, I can do something better. I don't like these. And I there's an, also a story where Steve modifies a fuzz face with different transistors and Scott makes fun of him supposedly he's like we gotta do something better than this so Scott is credited mainly and I think that's accurate designs the rat Steve's involved Steve has passed away we're not sure what the involvement is but it doesn't matter they both I give them credit they both design the rat I think Scott's the main designer and that's you know there's some really good reason to believe that's as early as 74. If they had the idea and let's say Scott breadboarded it in 74, that's sick because it puts it on par with in one year, Distortion Plus, 250 DOD, the Armin Square Wave, the Dan Armstrong Blue Clipper, and the Rat in one year. And they're that's all crazy. op amps going into hard clipping dials. And to me, that's like, yeah, I want to make that movie. Right. You know, right. I got so excited when I heard. Yeah. He could have actually done this in 74. Yeah. So they launched Proco. What we do know is 77 or 78, if we go to the top down here, uh, this is referred to as a bud box rat. Again, we're going to talk about stuff. If you want to see this stuff clearly, we've done a lot of homework for you. Go to that link. There's really great photography. We're going to keep it at this level. But this is a bud box, and that reference is to... This enclosure is honestly just a DIY Bud Industries. They still make cases. Um, you just buy them out of a catalog and put your prototypes in them. It's kind of like, you know, we buy the stock 125B cases, Earthquaker does. You just buy the case. But Bud Box, it's uh, primered, spray painted, crinkly black, and a really crazy traffic warning orange screen print. That's pretty wild. Um, this is the origin of the rat. There were 12 bud back bud words is hard. There were 12 <laughs> bud box circuits made. There has been some misnomer that there are 12 of these. There are not 12 of these. There are 12 circuits that went into 11 pedals. So gotcha. to clarify that, it's, that's always going to be nerdy. You Super. Like, you got to hold on to your belt or whatever the yeah. saying is. So there's this guy. Cool. This is a double bud box that Dana owns. I declare this officially. With no argument, you cannot yeah. argue. The rarest rat ever made, and possibly the rarest, one of the rarest pedals on earth. Wow. I would rather have this than the Klon number one all day. Dang. This is like yeah. such a piece of history. It was yeah. found in a basement in the rafters in Kalamazoo. That's right. Yeah. And a guy contacted Dana and said, Do you want this? Dana's collection is yep. immense. A it's huge really thanks to really Dana. Nice. Uh, here's the inside of that. So there's two of those circuits there. Wow. So Scott Burnham sets it a bench, makes 12 circuits and 11 pedals. And if you do the math, that means there are how many of the bud boxes? Ten. Ten. Yep. We passed math. <laughs> so there's ten of this prototype right here. And um, let's play it. No one's let's ever do demoed it. one to my knowledge nice. on YouTube. I, I don't like. Do you I know where the rest of them are? I know Dana has one. Right, okay. We actually had four of the circuits in one room, oh, and it was here, like right? Thanos rings of power right, jokes right. going on. I think there's one in Australia. Okay. And there is one in America, and I think the landfills have the other. I mean, these are very rare. Wow. Um, but I've never seen one demo. The pho the photography that's posted in the description is the best photography ever taken of this pedal. I may go a little crazy and do more of that later. We took it. I just don't know if we have time to post it. But you want to jam on it? Let's jam. Yeah, let's do start. it. Yes. All right. So we have... 
I've got an old memory man. If we go top down here, I have a memory man and just an RV five going into like a, a basement and, um, <laughs> a pack rat this isn't about we're not going to deal with this it's here in case i need it but last week's episode shows the pack rat well go watch andy at reverb don't we're not going to demo this let's do the history so here's the bud box the first a chord to my knowledge through a bud box on Yo. youtube premiere content right there and That's you're not even, they're not, you're not even paying for this look at my eyes it's totally free world premiere content of a bud box um appropriate that, color scheme too i must say yeah for for the time of year it is it is it's very cool um yeah so next again we're not gonna get into things we're not gonna demo stuff it doesn't matter right right, yep. right you know what a rat it. sounds like yeah so the bud box let's briefly talk about it the only differences with the bud box are that there's a hum. That ain't me. All right. The only differences with a bud box is that it's actually buffered bypass, which is really funny. Um, the pot codes in this date accurately and strongly across the t the double that Dana had, the single on this, they're all identical. There's a 74 pot, but there's a 70. 778 pot so we know it's not 74 you can't time travel so this is truly i i place it in 78 um and so the idea there is he made these he sold them to friends something like that a uh, custom order charlie wicks was talked into this there's actually a cut sheet you can see it's posted on that link in the bio the, like the essay where they advertised a photo of this sort of and then by 79, we see the version one. It's actually in, in my timeline, we're going to call it the version 1A, which is a fringe logo. Now, something that's never happened properly with the rat is that's fine. It's the battery clip. Something that's never happened properly with the rat is version numbers because mm -hmm. it's a mess. Yeah. It's like a hot, thick, soupy mess. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so I feel like. I put effort into it. People can not be okay with it, but I have identified what I believe to be the ultimate proper like version number and, and variation letter. So it's like numeric alphabetic. So this is called the uh, basically the fringe logo, which is the version 1-A. It's the version 1 first article A. And this is after the bud box. And um, you see the fringe logo here. If we go top down, I'll try to focus that. Yeah, look at that technology. You have the logo kind of fringes off of the, uh, you know, it's like a thick rat cartoon tail. Yeah. And then you have these little fringe lines. They're hard to see, but how's autofocus? <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> Come on, Sony. You get the idea. So, you know, it says the, that that font is not used ever again. The T has fringes. And then also notice those knobs. Those are not familiar to the rat. They're like a knurled silver top knob. They're not common. They're the bud box knob. So you see that carryover from here. And it says tone control. That's important. So you go from this. You, you can hear these. 
I've demoed it, I believe, on the show. Um, when I demo one, I'm going to turn it upside down. And then we end up with the, these are 1979, all of these. So version one is crazy. 1979, they were switching graphics constantly. Through the interviews and what we've learned, this is Charlie Wicks. Charlie Wicks walks in. Let's change it up. Let's make it exciting. And it's just like constant graphical changes. Screen printing things also cause them to change design. If you're a graphic designer, line weight is a huge issue. And they're like trying to print with screens and slide ink over. There were some issues there. So then we end up with a really quick, I think there were probably a few thousand of these made, uh, maybe a thousand. One thing I need to cover on the back of that is a serial number. It actually says 401590. That's an old SysTech 401 flanger serial sticker so that cool. was left over. Oh, wow. That's these so are cool. cool. Yeah. This is nerd neat. stuff. This, then we Real end neat. up the tone control. So this is what we call version 1B. Uh, no, it's not. Version 1B, I don't have. Dana had it. Version 1B Ooh. is right here. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Version 1B is cool. It drops the fringe logo and has the bud box knobs. This is okay. really rare. Don't have one. I'm totally fine. Like, I'm I'm totally fine. It's haunting even the stinger. So that's a cool version. That's going to be the 1B. So a tone control, fringe knobs. And then we have, there's another version in 79 that is ultimate rare, which is the version 1C tone control metal knobs. And these metal knobs come from another pedal in 79. That's, again, crazy rare. These are all Dana's. Thank you, Dana. Uh, this has the rust disease that's known on many rats because of improper painting. This is a custom order bass rat. It has an effects loop that you can hit a switch, turn on the loop, okay. a clean blend, blah, blah, blah. Dang. But those knobs, the scenario, in my opinion, the professional opinion here, customers said, can I get those knobs? Yeah. I think it might have been that easy. We know that they had been using those bud box knobs. Charlie Wicks is a very economical man historically. He wanted cheaper knobs, whatever. The metal knobs are probably too expensive. And then we end up with version one. This is also 79. Version 1D. This is the last 1979 rat. It is the tone control rat. So this is uh, pretty well known. That's the one I held up, actually. It's this guy. So this one is just straight, says tone control above it. Um, and it's the knobs we're used to. So if we do top down, the knobs we're used to. The classic, more, less cartoony rat tell. There's some evidence that Scott Burnham was bothered by the cartooniness, we were told. Also, Charlie just constantly changing stuff. So this is the rat knob we know. This stayed with the product forever. This is the classic uh, logo, but it still says tone. So this is V1. All the version ones say tone, and that's important. So then we get to... Uh, 1981, and we see version 2 up here. Version 2 is the same thing. It says filter. So just backing up to the version 1s, version 1s all sound the same. You They're the it. same circuit. It's cosmetic printing changes. Knob changes. That's it. <laughs> like we've been lied to. I remember doing this initial push to study yeah. and just being so mad. Yeah. Cause I like, when we get to the white face, I'll, I'll try to, remember. I was just like, oh, I remember it being like so much. Right. Thicker. Right. It's like, no, it's anyway, just moving knobs. on from that version two. So 1981, a uh, year before my birth. I just like saying that you sometimes. Uh, yeah. It just says filter. So what's the difference? Same exact circuit. There is a difference. There's not a tonal difference at all. There's a user interaction, user UI difference, user interface. Yeah. And the user interface difference is that on the classic rat that says tone, as you turn that knob up, it gets brighter. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the belief that I have right now, I am open to change. I think through the interviews and what I've learned, they got some feedback that, you know, you're playing a Fender amp, Telecaster, yeah. whatever. There's something about brightness that's like you want it to feel gooier. 
And they were getting some complaints about it being too bright. Mm-hmm. So Scott or Steve, it could have been either one, I don't know. Um, they reversed the soldering points of lugs three and one. Same circuit. That's it. They switched the two wires and made it rotate in reverse at a different taper. Now, this time what happens is visually as a guitarist, nobody like turns their pedal and turns a knob down. Right, right. right. You kind of put it like right there. You're like 60% yeah. you're like rock and roll. It's darker. It has presence. It's a better like user experience off the bat. Right. But it's the same exact circuit. Um, we can get into the myths about tantalum caps later. Remind me of that. <laughs> yeah. Because that so, applies to this era. Anybody can, have a question? I at, do. At V2. I, so you could argue perception of that knob change is... So it, it is different, but it's same circuit, but our perception's different. So that's maybe why we think they sound better or... Yeah. Take a version 1D yeah. that says tone control... No fringe logo and the no bud box knob. So okay. that that classic 1D tone control rat. Yep. It's there's a lot of those. Put it up next to the filter V2. Mm-hmm. Every single sound is in them both identically if you move the filter pot to where it needs to go. Got it. Right. And there's a sweet spot of Mm-hmm. Ad- adoral Ad- uh, is there a word auditory auditory perception it it's a podcast yeah. yeah auditory perception makes you like it more yeah oh totally i think yeah. it, it's it's that thing where it's like if you get a pedal and you plug it in and where the knob set when you turn it on is kind of like your first impression um but i i find it funny because the the original uh, taper makes more sense to me as a user mm-hmm. for some reason. Yeah, it's most pedals like mm-hmm. so every yeah. pedal. It's just yeah. it's just funny that that was a choice because I would, I I always just associate turning things up with getting brighter. You know. Yeah, but I think it's that it's the reason the rat. I think it's one of the major reasons it stood apart. It it actually you know we joke a lot on the show all the pedals are the same. The rat is a really beautiful different circuit yeah when you look at mxr distortion plus or 250 those are almost the same pedal it's like exhausting arguing with people but the rat like has some things and then when you add that ui thing where it's like so different in your perception and use i think it helped with like buy this thing it's different yeah right and, right and yeah i like the filter mm-hmm. uh, is this what i'm used to my first yeah. my first was like i'll get to it in a minute but that's what I grew up on is that, yeah, that right. backwards style. So then in 1984, they have to fix a problem. And the problem is that looking back down at this, um, you know, look at these photos if you want to get real intricate. But it says Proco. And then next to that, you can't read it because the Sony camera is stupid. But Proco Sound Ink. And then you have the rat. Here's the problem. When you try to screen print that, it's it's interesting. So hold on to that thought. And then here's the other problem. Um, so they're dealing with that already at this point. But there's another problem. What year is this? 1984, we see this pedal hit the scene, the white face. Mm-hmm. This is cult classic. I'm going to have fun talking about this. Why do they go small? Who's the biggest pedal company in the world? Boss. 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 Ibanez has the TS9. DOD has, like, the whole America's pedal. Yeah, right. They're like killing it with the FX series. EH has gone bankrupt, but they still have like killed everyone up until that. Yeah. And the rat is this big old pedal. Mm-hmm. And so they make that decision and they say, we have to shrink it down. And that's why this exists. Here is a very unpopular fact this is the same exact circuit as the filter big box V2. The V3A. This is V3A. I'm going to check my notes every time because it's so complex. V3A is a version 2 in a smaller box. You have been told that a white face has unicorn hoof and witch hair wound inside of its being or whatever. Yeah. No. This is smaller box, same exact circuit because they need to compete with the market. And this is... Really important to know. It's the first time. This is the one when I did my first test in 2018. I spent time yeah. in this room. 
I was in there for a few days. You might remember I was playing rats oh, yeah. with a notebook, losing my mind, like eating Subway and crying in the corner and just like, oh, this one's not. Yeah. And they just like all sound this. There's like this thing where it's like, there's no difference. Well, that I, was that was just auditory. And then we yeah. went to the scientific control test with equipment. And it's like, dude, these are the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember being in this room and you were like, man, I'm trying to pick units for the pack rat again years ago. <laughs> Yeah, and you're like, I'm trying to pick versions, but like all these ones I thought were different aren't, and it was kind of like it for a second. It was like, is the pack rat gonna even exist? Right, because it was like, is there enough variation? Yeah, it was kind of wild because I felt initially like this isn't gonna happen, uh, and this idea was from 2013. That's how long ago that I said we're doing a pack rat. It had a different name and different approach, but yeah, this white face is covered in lies mm. band name <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's killer though it's so beautiful there's a nostalgia to that logo i love i love the aesthetic of the white face i think it's the best looking yeah rat. well yeah. i have a surprise for you <gasps> okay. i'm giving you this one no you're not Aww. i have i have two i know what? you don't have one you're kidding Aww. me no nope, not at all that's one that cliff Whoa. had repaired so Shut it up. has replaced pots and i don't need it i have two other ones there's what? no box I don't care. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, there I'm so excited right now. Sweet. We're just making dreams come true. Making dreams come Boy, true. This um, is real. So the white face is 8485 and it it brings he's over here like weeping. I'm it brings so on excited. <laughs> it brings a different problem. Right. The smaller box equals smaller logo. Yep. They were already having trouble with Sony. Come on, man. I'm calling Fuji immediately. Uh, just hold it out in front of your face in front of this camera. There you go. There you go. Oh, wow. Just hold it, like, like <laughs> further. Whatever, yeah, whatever. Okay. Oh, you're Woo! a G. I used to, we used to do this all yep. the time. What's my problem? So if you look over here, they're having trouble here. There's yep. smudges and, like, ink blobs and any is there term. You know, it's just messy. Yeah. Like, the screen's not holding up. So then they shrink that joker. What's going to happen? It's going to get worse. It's worse. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and so Candy, she's telling us, like, they're losing money left and right. The printing, they're throwing, they're having to clean cases and spend days on this. Yeah, and so just this, to clarify, Candy is yeah. she is basically the head of the assembly process for Proco um, back in the day. Um, that's much, her. Yep, that's her in the is. crimson shirt. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to tell you who the guy is back there yet. Yeah, but that's the assembly boxing. She was one of our favorites. She was awesome. She was so fun. She had yeah. so many fun things to say. So. This is a problem. So 84, 85, they have to make a decision. The version 3A turns into, I feel like an accountant. I have like, <laughs> I have like, I have like my sheet because it's like, I got to get this right. Yeah. No editing. It's live. So version 3B arrives. Version 3B, I'm going to use Nick's mm. editorial directing wisdom. There we go. There you go. Clean. 80. There we go. 8485 Whiteface. And it gets its name because it's a white fill logo, Whiteface. This is 8586. And this is, uh, I mean, sorry, 86. Yeah, 86. And it's called a Blackface because. Black fill. Yeah. They just, yeah. They just printed the words instead Straight of not printing the it. words. It's like an inverse logo. Now, there's one major difference here. The Whiteface is the last time we ever see sound ink on the pedal. Mm -hmm. And again, because you can't print that small. Yeah. And guess what? what? These are the same circuit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I've seen... I saw a guy get punched in the face on Reddit. He was bleeding. Mm. People attacked him Internet over this. Blood. Same circuit. You know what's different? Screen printing. <laughs> you know what doesn't affect the tone of a guitar? Screen printing. The or looks. does it? Oh. This is like... It like, is. It, yeah. I'm jokingly saying this, but like, I had issues. Yep. Because I wanted these nuances. Like, we want that. Yep. Yeah, right. But I'm actually more excited. I feel like I've gone through, like, some type of, like, counseled healing yeah, in like, the side of my being. <laughs> like, stages of grief. I'm in, like, I'm in a, a nirvana of freedom, mm -hmm. which Ooh, is, yeah. I know the truth. Right, right. And it's like, this is great. And yeah. I just, I'm excited. Like, I no longer have to believe the bullcrap mm -hmm. that a white face is 
worth more because it sounds better. Right, it can right. be worth more because you're collecting them and you love how it looks. That's it. And all day, go buy it. Spend money. And if but it makes you play better, too, on a philosophical level, yeah, that's sure. okay. You're going to play the crap out of that. Man, life. I'm just so <laughs> yeah, excited yeah. over here. Well, we talked about this on expensive pedals where it's yep. like just understanding why you like a thing but being honest about it. Mm-hmm. like Admitting it. Just admit, yep. like, you like the printing that's different, mm-hmm. you know? And that's that's okay if that's all it is. I like the real Klon because it's beautiful. Yeah. Right. But I don't care. Mm-hmm. It's not any better than, like, right, a right. It, 100 other clones being made. Yeah, yeah, totally. There's a thing with, like, let's admit it. We need a shirt. Let's admit it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So they have another issue. Mm. <laughs> Lots of issues. Version 3C comes along in 86. So this is what we just showed, which is version 3B. Notice there's squares around the... Look at this. Look at this. Brackets. There's brackets. We're going to call them brackets uh, around the lettering, right? Well, I'm in here up to my cankles. Is cankles a word? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm up to my ankles and neck in, like... Just circuitry. Yeah. Like, I'm so immersed in, like, the feedback with this, like, just in there. And Katie walks by. So she's part of our team here, over yeah. brand graphic designer. And she's like, those don't have squares around them. Like, I was asking her, do you see anything? And she just literally, within how many seconds? Five <laughs> seconds. She goes, there aren't, there aren't any brackets around the words. And I, like, spit or something. Because I've never noticed, <laughs> I've never noticed it. My first rat was a no brackets, mm-hmm. and this is the final version of the V3. So the small box wraps with this, and guess what? Same, same Surrogate. thing. But it's like these cool moments of three aesthetics. We've nice. never, I've never seen anyone mention this. Mm-hmm. Surely someone has, mm-hmm. but. I'm going to pin it for fun, no brackets. So yep, hopefully no we brackets. see reverb where it says no brackets rat. That'd it's be fun. Gonna happen. And it could be also called on reverb the Katie no brackets rat. Hey, if you want to yeah. forever immortalize Katie's vision, her Eagle Hawk font <laughs> and graphical vision, the, the Katie no brackets vintage rat. Yeah. And just because it's no brackets, it should cost more. Right. Yeah. But yeah, so that's where we are on that. And so that's the version 3C. So, so far, there is no circuit difference after the tone knob changed to the filter knob. To be knob. technically correct, yeah, right? it's from the V1. Right. Fringe. Yeah. Okay. The sounds are all the same. With the Ver- change. Version yeah. 2 is a user interface yep. experience change. Yeah. Yeah. change. Same circuit. But there ain't a sound gone from either one. Okay. The bud box... Uh, it's there's like <laughs> slight because it has a, a buffer on the front, yeah, yeah, which yeah. kind of affects loading of the guitar. Yeah. But honestly, like I I spent some time on that, yep. and it was like, nah, it still wasn't. But what I am gonna do if we look down here, and let me know in the comments if you're interested. I think we will do a special product release yeah. of like some limited like we'll build some of these for yeah. fun and like make yeah. it like because it, it's all about the look. It's about yeah. like right. A cool re- reproduction. If the sound is not worth wasting a spot on the pack rack. Yep. So on on the note of the buffered input, are you going to talk about the switch at all? How he, it was Steve, yeah. right? Yeah, we'll get to we'll that. Get to on okay, the, cool, cool, cool. No, let's remember that. There's a lot to remember. Yeah. That'll come along. I just thought uh, it was cool. It, it's this one. Oh, it it's is. This one. Hey, good, good timing. timing. Good timing. So uh, next up, we are now in 19. 19- at least 87. This is a hard one to date. In 1987, we have several people, a guy named Scott, particularly, a guy named Bill, and then we have Uncle Steve. And we have this prototype here. Um, there's some more pictures of this. I'm, I didn't want to pull them into the system. There's a photo of the inside of this pedal, and there's a little strip board, like a Vero board, mm-hmm. which has a circuit on it. Mm-hmm. And it's like shoved into this is obviously a black face chassis so just laying around the shop they grab it this is a theme you're going to see they grab a case modify it for a new idea this is all the protos are in some type of wonky like go grab that thing that's in the drawer yep. and like they make it everybody talks like that apparently <laughs> especially in michigan i don't know they don't at all nope <laughs> but the uh they they have this circuit in there because they're getting tons of feedback like they're getting swamped in the same way they were getting swamped like 
boss pillars are smaller, your rat's too big. They make the white face. Mm -hmm. Then we get through, and it's like, we're in 1987 at least, and there's no LED. Hmm. Boss drops the perfect LED switching system in 77. The math on that is 11 years, 10 years at least, mm -hmm. with a pedal that's your only pedal. Yeah. You've shrunk in it, and you're still not putting an LED on it. This is a bad move. Right, right. Yeah, like how do you feel and, about that as a player? Well, and I, I remember, I can't remember exactly who said it, but there was definitely some uh, conflict within the company about adding the LED. Oh, yeah. I believe there was, somebody mentioned a comment like, well, you'll know when it's on when it's on. Yeah. Like, why do you need to, That you was know? Scott. Yeah. So, yeah, Scott. Scott and, seemed like a purist. And I back him up. Like, it's his yeah. pedal. <laughs> right. Say what you want to say. Like, he, I think he was like, leave it alone. Yeah, you know, right. Let the kids go by the other pedal. I don't right, care. Right. Whatever, do what you want. So I think, you know, this is a point where he, and there's some truth to the fact he kind of becomes distant from his own right, product right. as it keeps evolving. So they prototype, I had it up here, didn't I? Yeah. They prototype this. This is the RAT2 prototype. The RAT2 is version 4A. Okay. Version there's 4A. There's going to be a giant... <laughs> like portal of time where you don't hear me say four until I say it way after other versions. There's okay. a four B that comes. So there's this parallel. Hold on. There's I am a rat. I am. <laughs> look at me. I am a living rat meme. Okay. So there's like a parallel here where there's like stuff going on on this side and this side of time. Mm. And the rat holds. This is deep. This yeah. is scientific Whoa. philosophy. Um, scientific philosophy of America. It sounds like a like a journal magazine you have to pay $80 for that three people read. So, yeah, you have what's called this pedal, and it comes out. Um, let's get it in focus. This is the 4A Rat 2, which it's funny. That name is funny to me. But that tells you how they viewed it as an actual new product. Right. That's a massive hint. Yeah. The people that made it never created this bull crap. About right, different right. Versions. Yeah, yeah. That's really important. Yeah, uh -huh. they were like, "This is two. Like, <laughs> they told they. This has been in front of us for yeah, decades. The answer to the mystery has always been right there in that pedal. Mm -hmm. yeah. this is version two. But yeah. we don't listen. No, we don't. We listen. we feel and we want magic. Right. And then they are like, "This is right too." But <laughs> but is the only difference That's just it. that Thank there's a, there's Thank an you. LED? Yes. Thank you. Yes. And that's it. The difference, it's a little deeper and cool. It's aesthetic, uh -huh. completely aesthetic, and user interface, yeah. meaning LED. Mm -hmm. So there's a circuit added to this where, and I believe Steve designed this, and it's freaking genius, and he deserves all the credit because I've used it in versions of pedals, and there's so many builders who use this. Yeah. It's a circuit called Millennial Bypass. And all you need to know is to turn an LED on and to switch an input and output at the same time for bypass or through a circuit and a pedal, you need three poles with two throws. Well, they didn't have that switch. They had two poles with two throws. And you have to figure out, like, I got to switch the LED, but I need both poles because I have an input one and an output two. That's two, two. So math is hard. And so... He develops this circuit that senses the change mm -hmm. and turns on an LED with a transistor, and that's how yeah. they do this. Uh, it is not in the audio path. It doesn't even touch it, and there's, like, comical points right, in our interview right. where people are, like, calling in, like, it sounds different. I hear it, and it's, like, yeah. in physically impossible. Right, right. It's like saying that painting the hood of your car red from blue slowed it down. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's a good analogy. It's yeah, full of it. It's just, like, it's maddening. So the Rat 2, it's, it's still, f this is important, it's still sloped. This is why it's version or, or variation A in the version. So just notice it's flat, okay? And oh, it's not sloped. It's not, not sloped. sloped. It's okay. flat, flat at this point. So this is in 1988. There, there. It could be late 87. Don't want to split hairs. I want to split hairs, but I don't really know. I mean, yeah. I think it's 88. Yeah. Um, and the screen printing is still an issue. Yeah. So what do they do? No more screen printing. They use this Mylar plastic sticker system where they get these sheets of stickers. They're cut. They lay it over and stick it on. And that's why you see a lot of rats um, over the years. I have some over here. Come on, Sony. There we go. You'll see, like, breaking along edges. Right. Like it ruffles up. 
And that's just because this is a big sticker and it glows in the dark. So we think oh, the yeah, origin cool. of that is just the company gave them some options and go, we have a glow in the dark print. Right, and they're right. like, heck yeah. I mean, I would say yes to that. Right. So that's the uh, version 4A. Okay. We've only jammed once. It's true. I think people are fine. We're about to jam a lot. Oh, yeah. I need to remember to play the weird Bud mm-hmm. Era proto. Maybe we do that okay. in just a second. Yep. You want to do it now? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, let's do right it. Away. We create our own destiny. That's right. I'm going to come back at 1989. Y'all hold me to that. So let's... 1989. Let's, 1989. Grab that silver box. Yep. We have quite a mystery here. Um, this one's cool. Here's the Bud box. No pressure. No big deal. Just, just, so this... Well, actually, hand me the book box. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I came across this from a, an awesome guy named Chris. This came from the factory when they shut down, uh, when they sold and moved out of Kalamazoo. They're in Missouri now. So I had this, and I'd seen – there's like one photo of this that's literally the size of a pinky nail, literally. Like the resolution's like – Yeah. It's like 8-bit. And so you can tell what's going on here. And I always had this, and I was like, oh, that's the bud, the enclosure. And so when I finally got a bud box, um, you open this up, and this primer paint is in this. And then you see this is the same exact case, same exact knobs, same exact very interesting G308 op amp, which is just a really old LM308. And it's a ring modulator rat. Weird. Prototype. That's so strange. That's cool. <laughs> That never made it into production. Yeah, and supposedly Scott Burnham has commented on this through some conversations. It's 18 okay. volts, two batteries shoved into this rat's nest of Dang. chaos, and it's a Craig Anderton ring modulator that Scott built and maybe modded or not. I don't know, and so I think the world should hear it. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah, let's see what we got here. We got... That's, the knobs aren't labeled. Let's just take a shot at something chaotic. Just start a drum yeah. bass loop or something. I'll come on my mic. Tell me what key you're in and we'll go. as usable as a rat right you know what i'm saying Much different yeah so that is it squealing as well it everything's happening this is, <laughs> this is old gear so this is cool it's a could have been i don't know it's a bud box scott burnham prototype ring modulator designed by craig anderton and my, i don't know it's amazing it's crazy so that's a really back to possibly even before the bud box for all we know maybe everybody starts you know no one just immediately builds the rat. Right, right. So he's obviously learning from Craig Anderton, which is an amazing right. person to learn circuits from so through those you, books. You could argue maybe that did come first if he's sort of developing. Yeah. I mean, maybe, who knows? It's yeah, I mean, say, a lot of this is like, we're in the desert. We're digging yeah. for the Sphinx. Right, right, we right. find a bowl. The bowl has sand on it, and the sand <laughs> looks like the sand next to a Sphinx. Right, right. So we go, that bowl was with the Sphinx. Yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it but it could be just like a Ziploc bowl that someone like Yeah. You know. We know he made that. He said he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we know it's in the same enclosure. That's all we and know. And that's it. <laughs> well he did he mentioned Craig Anderson. And he said what he wrote on it too. Good I enough. forgot that he said Maybe, Oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe somehow this this podcast will bring <laughs> yeah something to the tool. surface. I, I think he said w- the writing we wondered. I read last night. I found a comment. He said, "Watch out!" I think he wrote, "Watch out." <gasps> Neat. I think that's what he said. Something like this. Some kind of like expl- expl- yeah. explanative explanation. Explana- Expl- expletive is not what no. I mean. watch out. <laughs> Exclamation! Unless you, unless you live in a certain country in Europe, watch watch out. I don't know. Is that offensive? I don't know. I don't know. All right, <laughs> up to 1989. 1989. Starts this incredible journey of an engineer builder named Grape. Grape. Grape is the absolute. Why did I not pull a picture of Grape up? Grape is in the in the article. Go look at Grape. He's amazing. Yes. Ah, should have done that. Whatever. You can't redo the past unless you edit, which we're not doing. So Grape uh, is this. Number one unsung hero of the rap. Yep. Like, you're about to yeah. see Grape constantly doing things. We interview Grape. He pulls up on his motorcycle, sets down, and just goes, just, yep. he's insane. He's so clever. He's so smart. I, like, wanted to hire him. Yeah, yeah. Because as he walked through how he thought and what he did for Proco, I was like, at one point, you remember, I was like, what do they pay you for? And he's like, <laughs> I just did. I was like, yeah, yeah. Man. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's just an awesome dude. So, 1989, Grape is a guy there. He plays a Marshall Distorted, and he doesn't like the rat because you plug a rat into a Distorted Marshall and you right. get, like, sludge. I mean, if you're in, like, a shoegaze post-core sludge band, it's right, great. Right, but right. Grape's playing, like, you know, <laughs> rock, rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I don't like this. So he has built some circuits. He's also a big, like, Craig Anderton books and DIY. And he sees a Craig Anderton article on diode clipping. Craig Anderton is someone we need to do a story on. Yeah. He's still alive. Um, oh, neat. And he sees where you can replace the clipping diode. So the way that a rat works, it's really simple. You have an amplifier and the amplifier just amplifies the guitar and sends it out louder than it was created and puts it through these diodes. And these diodes clip the waveform. It's They're like, I've said it before. There's an episode called History of 1970s Distortion or something, Op Amp Distortion. I call them like distortion monsters. So diodes like grab the signal and like chop the top off and suck it off to ground like... Kind of like the under work. What's the Stranger Things? Uh, the upside it's down. Like, it's the like the upside down. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like ups, yeah, the Demogorgon or whatever. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that Harry yep. Potter? What nope, is? Demogorgon. No, You're right. You I don't know. Fiction's hard. <laughs> so they do that. And he reads, well, I'm going to like pop. We have these LEDs lying around because we have had this rat too now. And they use five millimeter yeah. red LEDs underneath this print, underneath the plastic. And so he reads, you can use LEDs. They have a higher threshold, meaning they're 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 more chill monsters. They're not gonna they're mm, not gonna. Right. If it's a cookie monster, he's these are less hungry. Right, right. Right. So they're they're on the opposite spectrum. The one in four one four eight, the traditional rat sits in a middle. You're gonna hear me talk about this in another version. And the LED is a is a less aggressive one, meaning it's gonna let the the boost be more of a boost, louder and cleaner. And when you do clip. It's going to cut off in this way that's a lot like a tube amp. So when he said he designed it, he popped him into a case, and he turned the volume all the way up and had the gain back, and he's like, in heaven. And he shows it to Charlie, and Charlie goes, all right, Turbo Rat, 1989, they put it out. Amazing. And this is the first slope enclosure. 1989, with that approach, they're still evolving to meet the era. They add and they make it smaller. They add an LED, and they're like, everybody and their mom for ten years has put the foot switch lower than the knobs. Hmm. It's we, time. It's time. <laughs> yeah. So that's the Turbo Rat, and I love the Turbo Rat. It's a great overdrive. So um, this is the first time we see a change to the Rat circuit. Yes. Nineteen eighty nine. Up to this point, they're all the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. Yep. It is crazy. This is the first time we see the change. Mm-hmm. For sure, in a released product, got it. There's a right. hazy thing of when oh. these tinkerings start, okay. and there's one very 
naughty product that's impossible to rein in. And okay. it's the R2D U, and we'll talk about oh, that in a second. Oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. We have next, they release the vintage big box reissue. So this is the boom of the vintage market. You know, guitars are selling for like a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. It's like way before the bubble burst back in the day. And Charlie's like, hey, let's reissue the big box. And I think it was also a way uh, that like the turbo, I don't think Scott was a fan. He's like, why are you changing it? You had an LED. And he's like getting annoyed. I think this was a way to say like, to try to even get Scott back in and yeah. make him like it. This is the reissue. The way you tell a reissue apart, it's simple. It simply doesn't say sound ink next to Proco. So if you yep. see a big box without sound ink and someone's on reverb claiming it's vintage, become a reverb police. I will deputize you now. Message them and say, no, 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 no. That's a 91 reissue or later. Change your price. Bam. We have to change the world one pedal at a time. That's right. Amen. So these went. These were made all the way till 2005. Is that what I'm yeah, reading on the notes here? 2005. Yeah. That's a long time. Yep. I also see that on reverb being misrepresented because I've been looking for rats. I don't have to look for rats no more. Let me just say, <laughs> but people people say like mid to late '90s is the last bit of these vintage bits. So that's not yeah. the case. 2005. Uh, yeah, 2005. Very cool. Um, like anything, rat. Yeah, hard anything's to know. possible. Okay. Cool, cool, I cool. there was a huge gray market, meaning that's right. There were like employees yeah. literally walking bags of yeah. products out to their cars, like crazy yes. stories. Grape actually was telling us stories about watching the security footage and watching people like take bins and like oh do like side alley dealings with rats so there's at one point scott said he devised this security system right where you step oh, that on was the right nail. for the yep. that was for the um the rat's nest which was yep. the basement shop where scott and steve worked okay. and they developed this multi-pronged security system where you had to step on these different things. Oh, you stepped on a nail, touched yep. another nail, and it connected the circuit and the door popped open. Yeah. And no one could figure out how to open the door. Yeah. This is who we're dealing with here. Right, right. Yeah, Lots this is theft. not your normal. <laughs> right. This isn't like Gibson. Like this is. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So next up, we have uh, the next version, version 6A and version 6B. Version 6A and 6B are the same exact pedal. They just have different printing on them. And they came to be when Guitar Center approached Charlie Wicks and said, we love the Rat. It's awesome. And I'm I'm inserting this because I absolutely believe this is why. I think I could prove it easily. Uh, DOD's a home run. The Grunge is the best-selling pedal in the world around 96. Like The numbers are astronomical because of Kurt Cobain and the whole just the vibe. And they say, hey, we want to compete with that in the store. The rat's a little pricey for kids. We need a rat that we can buy from you for $15. That's crazy. And Charlie Wicks, businessman, goes, absolutely, yeah. not knowing yeah, how to yeah. do it. And guess who he assigns? Grape. Grape. So Grape is told to make a $15 American-made rat that's unique for the the hot retail market of kids getting into guitar because of Nirvana basically. Yeah, yeah. And Grape does it. And it's called the Roadkill. And the Roadkill is the telltale signs are all over this. First of all, blood splatter graphic right, on it. Right. Like this is DoD. Yep. Yeah, this is yeah, Jason yeah. Lamb era mm-hmm. Chase. Yep. Yeah. The knobs, the other tell, headlight screech and splatter. Yep. Rat doesn't do this. Rat mm-hmm. is a simple man. Rat is right, right. a blue collar it's very straightforward. I'm going to work nine to five. I'm coming home. I'm drinking an old style. I'm watching Andy Griffith. I'm going to bed. Leave me alone. And right, this right. is like, hey, dad, can I have the keys to the car? Yeah. Yeah. Roadkill. You should illustrate that later. I will. So, yeah, this is what happens. Charlie over anticipates, as a good businessman should do sometimes, he orders a lot of boards, right? So, Grape devises this thing, first of all, from a PVC pipe mm-hmm. screen door. Actually, yeah, he he explained how there's actually screen door parts they used here in the rubber footing. This battery door was like this genius idea because it's plastic with metal sides, easy to assemble. The circuit has an input buffer. It's the most original rat circuit there is. And I want to say this before I keep talking. This is maybe the coolest rat there is Mm. that gets no appreciation because it was so cheap. Got it. It looks silly. Yeah. And then the brat, which I'll show. This is the same pedal. They just... They don't look pro. 
Right. They sound so good. The switch is kind of broke. What's cool is we put this in the pack rest, so you'll be able to play this reliably. It has soft clipping like a tube screamer, Mm -hmm. as well as the rat hard clip. It's this hybrid thing. It's got capacitor changes, tons of low end. Uh, We didn't spoof Nirvana with this at all last time. No. (laughs) So anyway, Charlie Wicks orders too many things, and they have to use the same bill of materials to clear out inventory. And obviously, Guitar Center can't sell the amount he ordered. So they decide to make a world market version. They'll sell in all the stores. They call it the Brat. I like to think that means budget rat. I'm making that up, but it makes me feel better. The box says extreme distortion unit. The vibe is insane. Yeah, that's that. So that is version six. Version six is one pedal with two faces. That's the second coolest looking rat, in yeah. my opinion, next to the white face. It that's is. Very it's cool. nice. All right, next is the doozy. I'm going to get through this fast. Um it, it it's it's a doozy. It starts with it's the deuce tone. So let's talk about the deuce tone. Where are we at? Where are we at with deuce tone? The deuce tone. Hand me that guy too. Yep. That funky. So the deuce tone is deuce rats. Is that the word? I don't I don't know how to I don't know how to phrase that. So the deuce tone is a pedal that came to be basically it's a two in one rat with a bunch of clipping options isolated. This is like the one of the first two in ones ever made. I'm sure. Wow. Uh, it's got to be, there, there might have been a prescription electronic thing, full tone, I don't know, doesn't matter. So the deuce tone comes about because Charlie Wicks, this reissue thing does well, the vintage market, and Charlie comes in and the story is, hey, you know, we had that rack unit thing we made in custom numbers right. and we sold like eight <laughs> of them. Let's like reissue that. And everyone at Proco goes, no, this is like, <laughs> no, please don't reissue this horrible product that no one bought. Yeah, it's yeah. a rack unit we have to build. You know, it's essentially two yeah. rat yeah. pedals, probably blackface, and they just shoved them in an enclosure. Yeah. So I have a prototype here. This is the this is what I believe to be the deuce tone first proto work Mm -hmm. so you'll notice there's toggles and x these aren't on deuce tones deuce tones are really weird they're really rare dana and i were talking all day yesterday i can't nail down when this rack unit was made yeah the internet says 84 that is the biggest pile of bull crap on the internet yeah like there's nothing worse than that there's no way it's 84 every every one of them has a backlit led or a black face simple thing or or actually no brackets so it's like it's in that era after the white face in some literal like steve lukather wants one Mm -hmm. and they make it there's there's no press we see an ad in 88 it's in the description in the whole essay and so this one though is modified with all these clipping toggles and Grape did it, and this date's 87. So Grape, again, was tasked. Obviously, they talked Charlie out of making the rack. Yeah. Yep. Maybe they didn't at first, and Grape's like, I got to change the thing, get some energy on it. But right. it, it, eventually, Grape goes, hey, this thing has a foot switch, right? It has a MIDI cable. He goes, let's just use the foot switch case and put them in there and make a pedal like a normal yeah, company. because yeah. it'll fit. And it was a light bulb moment, and so he took that foot switch Shove two pedals in it. This is it. This is the actual prototype. This is like, I am holding time. Dang. It's so cool. He wrapped them. It's just, it's like two, you get the idea. He wrapped the stickers, has the clipping toggles, and then this comes out 2002. Is that correct? Yeah, 2002. And it introduces a lot of cool stuff. On the back, it has the turbo, right? So you yep. have the turbo mode, LEDs. Vintage Rat, one in four, one, four, eights. And then each side has a unique rat that's never been seen, okay? Mm -hmm. Never been seen. And one of them makes it out of this pedal into its own world, and one never does. One is called Clean Rat. Clean Rat has (laughs) never become a product, but we have the prototype where Grape tried to pitch it. Yeah, that's awesome. So this, let's play this. I love that. There you go. You can see the writing? Yeah. This is a rat. Is it a... Yeah, this is a Rat 2 with a flat panel, flat top, with the uh, the sticker peeled off, white tape, and Rat's messy handwriting, and it just says Proco preamp prototype. Let's plug it up. You you just had to drill the... Well, during it, our interview, It was we were, riveted, and I yeah. was like, horrif- I was like, did he rig this to <laughs> self-destruct? I've had this thing for a while. Have this you? came from Chris as well. Nice. 
During um, our interview, we showed Grape, and we're like, Grape, what is this? He goes, well, that's my handwriting. That's, uh, well, was, that's a poem, and he talked about everyone, it. I had asked everyone, have you ever seen this? And he held, he's like, yeah, I made it. <laughs> it was like the most amazing moment. <laughs> so it's a rat with no clipping LEDs at all. So no restraint, no distortion monsters at all. How crazy is that? So it's, it's just going to be what it is here. It's Ooh. like a... It's just so crazy loud. My volume is, it's, if it does clip, it's all op amp distortion. So it's like real gooky, like. Yeah, it's crazy. You wanna jam it? Yeah. Yeah. Woo. I'm gonna, we know it does a nice clean boost, and I don't care about that. I'm gonna take it to the max. Let's see what we got. There might be a reason this never came out. Let's see. That's just an op amp being destroyed. That's the new hit song from the No Diodes. That's a pretty bad joke. <laughs> so that one never makes it, right? But one does make it, and I won't get into that yet. You already know what it is. Dang. Before we have that, we have a uh, another kind of reissue. I don't give those version numbers. So if it's like a Deuce Tone Juggernaut reissue, it's not, I just think it is what it is. We just should call it what it is. I said the same thing twice. Ooh. So one day Charlie Wicks walks in. He goes, "You know what? It's been 25 years since we released the Rat. Uh, this day was in 2003. If you do some basic math, this debunks the idea that it was 77. The math says 78 for the Bud Box. 79, yeah, 78. Based so it's on... it's it's kind of a help because it says 25 years of grunge. So internally, oh. 2003 was the 25th anniversary. What's do the math real quick? Is that correct? 25 years. Yep, 78." Yep. 78 yeah. would be the Bud yeah. Box date. 2003, which, we're talking, right? Even though Scott Burnham has said in a museum thing that he helped curate 77. But mm. I, I have to stand with the fact they put this out, knowing what they're talking about, and memories are hard. 78 Bud Box. That's why, I, that's why I've stuck to that. You know, it was the 70s. And, there, and you what know, we heard, there was a lot of, there was a lot lot going, of stuff on. going on. It, <laughs> you know, a little fuzzy, maybe. So there's a fun picture of Dana, the collector friend, uh, crazy rat collector. He shows up at Proco one day, and Charlie just gives him one. So these are just 91 rat reissue boards. Candy, I think, made most of these. She signed them all. And there's like 25 of them on Earth. They gave them to like Jeff Beck, David Gilmore, people yeah, yeah, that were yeah. just like, it was just Charlie literally walking in and going, get some silver cases, let's use those boards we've had in those boxes, yeah, and yeah. let's thank people for 25 years of a pedal that changed my company. Wow. Yeah, it's awesome. Never seen one on the market. Um, yeah, it sounds like a rat, but it's cool. It's a rat. Cool piece of history. Next up, we have version 7, which we did put in the pack rat. It comes out of the deuce tone, the deuce tone, and it's called Dirty Rat. So Dirty Rat, remember I said that a stock rat, 1N4148 diodes are like the middle ground, right? They have the rat saturation we're used to. The turbo LED is less of a distortion monster, so it's a little more touch sense. I hate that word, phrase, words. Touch sensitive, amp-like, responsive. <laughs> and then if you swing to the other side equally, so 1 in 4 and 4 eights LEDs. Over here, if you use a germanium diode, it's a 1 in 3 4 a originally. It's the other side. It's the most distortion monster. This thing's hungry. It's hangry. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's clipping the waveform. It's compressing the crap out of the pedal. And that's the You Dirty Rat. And I have pedals every... There it is. You Dirty Rat. You've seen these. Um, the newer versions use a bat 
41. It's the same exact spec. People are going to tell you that the germanium is better. That's not true. I'm not going to go there. There's a prototype that I have that makes no sense. It's a You Dirty Rat that is supposedly a first article from England. None of the employees knew. Even Grape was like, I don't know. Yeah. It looks nothing like the fuzzy rat font. We're going to call that rat, rat, rat fuzz font. Um, you can buy that pack on our website. No, you can't. But the dirty rat, is that, is, what font is that? It's like. Do you know? I don't know. Is it, Helvet is it Helve Helvetica? Can we say a Helvetic type font? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we don't know. That's you dirty rat. We're not going to play it because you can watch a thousand demos of that. Version 8 is a pedal that unfortunately has the wrong name. And I think mm. a, a few employees agreed with this. Um, it's an amazing and very, very different rat in the same lane as, you know, what was the other pedal we talked about? It was just very, the uh, the Brat. Like, it's, it's in the land of, like, very different. And it's called the Solo. And we'll declare this version 8. Um, and version 8, it has a scoop and a tone control. And it has a three-way slider toggle for diodes. So it has some interesting asymmetrical clipping, which means you like combine a one in four, one, four, eight with an led and you get kind of one side of the waveform gets the standard clip and one side gets the open mm -hmm. clip or vice versa, like asymmetrical standard clip on one side of the waveform and then germanium on the other. And you have asymmetrical clipping. That makes sense. Yep. It's a hard subject. Yep. So you have hot melt and burn and it says solo. So why are you going to buy this, Nick? Because you got to do your solos with it, man. It's a bad name. It is. It, I mean, actually, I don't mean that negatively. Yeah. I mean, we. I have named stuff so bad. Right. This is a massive disservice to how cool the circuit is. Yeah. Because what Grape did, this is Grape, he put in like a back send all bass treble where the old control was. And it's like, if you know anything about distortion by now... If you just take a Boss G7 and place it in front or after your favorite drive, you can change that drive. And yeah. this, this tone control allows the rat to be crazy. Uh, I'm not going to play it. But I do have a prototype. This is original. This is the original one and only. There's no more. There's apparently one of this proto. It was going to be called Ratso, which is a way better name. It's less like pigeonhole. Like mm -hmm. it probably right. would have done way better. And he took a Stumac um, guitar dual pot like you'd put in a Telecaster with like an active circuit and just shoved it in there and like wound, so cool. like, wired it all up. Stacked. So it was called the Ratso. Again, if you're just tuning in, I don't know how that's possible, but you would uh, just look in the description. There's a huge bunch of photos of all this stuff. So that that is um, the solo. And then we're back to version four. From version eight to version four. So version four starts with the flat flat top LED rat two, which we learned is an internal hint that it's the first change. You know, it's an LED to them. Yeah. So that means all these other classic rats are the same thing and everybody's out of their mind. That's basically what they're saying without saying it. And they have a problem. So the problem is that rat two. Although turbos are coming out and all these things are happening, they yeah, sell yeah. so many rat twos. Yeah, and Proco is a family-owned business at this point, being ran out of a big room in the old Gibson factory, where Heritage Guitars was. They had leased a space. They're not huge. They're they're about the size of our company. So it's like a big small business, and they're it's just killing them. Like they have yeah. other things to make. And so Charlie, I believe, tells this to one of their biggest providers of parts. They have a company that supplies them with wire, um, cable ends, and jacks, and that's Neutrik. Is that how you say it? I always say so. Neutrik, and people yell at me. It's like I've the, always said Neutrik, but Neutrik. Just say well, Neutrik. I think, hey, it's, I think it's Neutrik. Say however you want to say it. So Charlie says to them, um, "Hey, like, this is a problem," and they go, "We'll just make it in China." And then they do that with stringent quality controls. And starting in uh, that year, which is 2008, we have this, um, which is the China. I The only way to identify this really is it's sloped. It's made in China. So it's a RAT2 version 4B. And I just pin it the Chinese slope. Like it's made in China and has a slope. And that's the best way to identify it. The serial number 
is very modern. This camera loves white, doesn't it? Yeah, but you get it. Yeah, this is the pedal you can buy right now for 69 bucks, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. If you've never had a rat, go order this right now. Mm -hmm. Like, go wherever you want to go. Get a rat, too. This sounds exactly like the old rats. I know you don't want to hear it. The pots are a little trash in the sense that if you start modding this, you're going to have problems. You're going to have to repair them. But if you just own this, like Nick, this is your rat. Yeah. Talk, it's a working man's rat. It's, it's a working $69 man's rat. rat. It, it sounds like it should. Just don't pull the knobs off and fiddle with it. Just right. use it. Just leave it how it's supposed to be. And big update, the power jack on the back. Yeah. I mean, you, practical change. It's a... It's a great $69. $69. I feel like I should keep saying $69. You should. So that's the 4B. Point of clarification, yeah. rat twos are being made during all the rest of this yeah, so stuff, the, right? They're the all rat, parallel. Yeah, they're okay. all parallel. And the rat two is the only one that's being made over there. So they continue to make the turbos, nice. do dirty yeah. rats. Do, they're making everything else at home. Nice. Yeah. And they still make most all that in Missouri. They relocated. And the rat two is still made by Neutrick or Neutrick nice. or however you feel like saying it. <laughs> And then we have another reissue. It's a 2010 white face. I think this is funny because it feeds. Here's where they're at. People love this pedal. Yeah. There's some new employees who are younger who are on the forums. Mm -hmm. They see it. Maybe they believe it's better. They should know better. Right. But they put it out. It's a beautiful pedal. I'm glad they did. They made it for one year. But really a white face reissue is an aesthetic thing. Right, right. But they did have a ton of attention to detail it has the lm308 chip it's like the right layout they really did it well like the battery thing's right they put sound ink back on right right now that's a problem because if you get on reverb you'll see people listing reissues for the price of a vintage win which is funny because they're kind of the same worth there weren't many reissues made i don't even have one this is dana i can't find one that's fine and like they're kind of worth the same thing, ironically. Yeah, I was literally yeah. just on Reverb on my phone. What did over you here. see? They're they're pricey. Yeah, if these are actual reissues, which I think you could. The way the only way I can tell is, yeah. they're the 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 screen print's a little smaller. It's like just slightly like five four percent. It feels wrong. It doesn't feel wrong, but like if you stare at it going, you'll be like something's off. I think we found one in real time. What's it going for? 380 plus fifty dollars shipping. So, I mean, that is one. I can tell by looking at that. Yep. I don't know what it is. Yeah, There's something it feels about a little it. different. It feels different. There's also one listed for twelve hundred dollars. Message me that. <laughs> I don't will. need it. I don't need that. Nope. I don't need well, it. Well, um, if I you're missing that particular it's one, it's totally fine. I think you need it. Let's keep rolling. 2014. We have the introduction of the V9. The V9 is the fat rat, right here. The Fat Rat. It's in a bigger enclosure. It has a lot of mods. This was kind of the work of three people, put maybe more, putting their heads together. How can we bring the rat into a big new era? I mean, this is just what it is. Like, Proko's coming up against JHSs and Earthquakers at this point. It's a different era. Yeah. Proko, Proko's like the granddad, you know? And they're right, like, right. but they're working hard. And this is a killer pedal. Mm -hmm. This is my second suggestion if you've never played a rat. It's only like 129 Yeah. And it has, like, a, it takes the mods that, like, Robert Keeley started with. I would do them. There was a Monty Elms mod. There was there was a lot of cool mods. There was a There was one called, like, a... I don't know, some Russian dictator's mm -hmm. name. I can't remember the name. Or vodka mods style, something like that. Anyway, uh, and it's like a base edition, MOSFET clip uh, stock uh, clipping. It's just cool. Like, it's really, and it's really heavy duty, well made. It hasn't done well, which is crazy. I would, I think a lot of you would love this. It's a little bigger, but it's not obnoxious. It's just like, yeah, it's yeah. like it feels good. It's like and it feels way more sturdy than this. Even though this is fully metal, the China slope, this does have a like a. Is there such thing as a pedal girth? Like a yeah, oh sure. yeah, pedal girth. Like a yeah, pedal girth. That's a shirt. Pedal what's, girth. What's your pedal girth? <laughs> so here's the proto to that. Um, that's not that proto. It is. We can't say the name on public television, but this was the original idea. <laughs> this is being overnighted to me for photography, so we'll put all that in the, the thing as well. Very cool. Um, 
Yeah, that they use the silver anniversary unprinted box. This is the typical Proco thing. Mm -hmm. Grab the stuff and make the thing. Okay. Then we have what I refer to back to version four after nine. This version four is a parallel nightmare to track yeah, down. Yeah. Parallel nightmare? Parallel nightmare. Dang. New band. <laughs> There's all kinds of names. It's the version four C, the version four D, and the version four E. These started in 2015 and they're they're kind of consecutive through several years. We saw this white rat pop up. This was the first one? First yeah, color? I, I think this is the 2015, the white rat. Okay. And this red one pops up a year or two years later. I actually haven't gotten to, I just had to choose my battles on this study. This is like a year, at least a year later. Okay. And then this, this was 2019, I believe, because I remember showing it in one of those episodes, like Favorite Petals or something. That looks good. That's a good looking red. It's awesome. It's just it's just a China slope. Like mm. that's all it is. It's painted a different color. And so Proco has this one distributor dealer. Their biggest market is Japan. Like at times, astronomical percentage of the rat sales all ship to Japan. And this dealer had a lot of pull. He'd call him up. What was his name? Do you remember? Mm. It's ooh. Uh, my, don't, uh, don't worry about it. It <laughs> doesn't try on. But it's a nope. distributor. We're not. We're from Missouri. It's I K E B E. A Kebby. I don't, it's not right. There's no way that's right. Nope. I, Paul Gilbert's not here to tell me what it's because he can, yeah. he always helps me. He's not <laughs> here. Paul, help me. Anyway, Japan only, but because of the internet, that's funny. Right. Most everything I buy is from Japan with pedal collecting. Uh, so, yeah, those are the other version fours. And then this is the last version. It's the Lil Rat. Not little. Lil Rat. Not little. How adorable. Lil. The Lil Rat. It's I'm so gonna, cute. Oh my gosh. And you know what? It's made with all surface mount parts. It's two inches, and it sounds perfect. Yep. Wait, but it has surface mount parts. Oh, yeah. it's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, should what? we jam? Should our final jam? Why do we not play? Be? I, I want to know one one question for you. So what, what chip is in that little rat, Josh? It's the OP07. Do we want to go there? Are we? Do we That's wanna, why I asked the question. Do <laughs> what do you want to jam? We need to do one more jam, yep. and then there's also we're not going to do it here. But I think it's worth at some point discussing oh, dang. how I chose the variant section. So when you look at the pack rat, it's like two courses of savory rat dishes. You have the original mm. Proco course, which takes a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You're setting down suit and tie, right. wine, cheeses, courses. Everything. And then you change gears to variant course. Right, you're already right. full. It's like dessert. And so we went through tons of like... How did I not? Why did I not use the very metal by Demarzio? Why did I not use the Gaia Tone? Whatever, this thing's full of them, and I'm just gonna let that haunt you. I'll show you at some point. So, let's, you wanna do myths? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all ask me a myth, and I'll try my best. Hey Josh, what chips in that lower rat? Is it the same LM308 that was in the originals that actually sound better? No, it's not. Let me help you with that. Okay, please. Young son. Thank you. The LM308 is the original op amp that Scott Burnham used, and it's it's a single op amp. That sucks, like most pedal op amps. Most of your famous op amps are really bad performing audio op amps. So the 4558 Tube Screamer thing, it is a horrible chip, yeah. but it works great in the overdrive because it's... Its weakness is its strength. You're okay. creating oh. distortion. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. And so the LM308 has a thing. And the, the, primary, uh, the primary way that it's talked about is a thing called slew rate. And I need to make this quick. So slew rate is basically how it feels when it distorts. I know that's a vague, but there's a thing to distortion when an op amp's clipping where there's an attack and a release, just like a compressor. Right. That's overgeneralizing the crap out of it and someone hates me, but sure. that, that is what it's called. It's a slew rate. It's how fast it responds. It's how sloppy it is. It's how bad of a part it is. And the LM308 has a slew rate that's real bad. Got yeah. It. And so part of the, the thing is when Scott Burnham made the rat, the story and the legend is, and I think it's true, he's making this rat. He's building this op amp boost with hard clipping mm -hmm. Craig Anderton's obviously an inspiration here in some way. And he puts the wrong resistor in an otherwise fairly data sheet operation of this op amp. Mm -hmm. And he 
the resistor value is too low in the gain network and it overloads the op amp with signal and causes the, the actual amplifier to clip in front of the clipping of the diodes. And so there's this like really complex harmonic thing happening in the rat where you have this, when you heard the, uh, the preamp that I played, it sounded like farts. Right, right, it's the original right. fart pedal. <laughs> you add to that this clipping at the end that right. smooths it out and then a fat buffer that further smooths it out and you have magic one thing alone is like eh. yeah so around 2005 it's in the article my brain's dead too so they these are gone got it but there's a drop-in replacement called the op07 exact same specs and people need i'll say this uh, if you want to watch the myths 10 myth what's it called that's a lot of views. It's like over a million views, I think. Ten pedal myths or something, something like, like that. Like that yeah. Five um, pedal myths. Five? Whatever. Five. I'm being told five. Six. Oh, six, six, six pedal Whatever. Myths. It's wow. a number. Numbers are hard. So watch that. I explain this. But we need to attach a physical evidence or reason to feelings we have. Hmm. And the op amp was chosen. Yeah. And I think it is a massive disservice to the design of the rat, Scott Burnham's design, which was the design of the rat is not good because of the 308. The 308 is good because Scott Burnham used it properly, and the OP07 is the exact replacement part. The 308 is not why the rat sounds good. I could put 15 different chips in it, and it'll sound the same. By saying it's the 308, you are creating fake magic. You are talking about stuff you don't understand, most likely, and you're just coming up with a reason why you like a pedal when it's probably because you like vintage, you like nostalgia, you like that it's bigger, you like the look of it, you had one when you were younger, but the chip is the reason, and that's the myth. It's mm. not true. Busted. Yeah. Busted. Any thoughts there? Do y'all just want to... Because you've learned a lot about this. We I, sat through, I mean... Every time I brought it up in the interviews, people are like... Oh, yeah, like, there were so many people that were just like no this is the same thing it's not different and yeah i do think it like kind of does a disservice to the designer like yeah. why would you yeah. you know there again it's not rocket science and these people are smart let's do top down uh, is there a way to oh yeah, yeah yeah all right this is this is hard to do here but that's that's the lm3 is that visible it's hard to tell Hold it out in front of you and, and show the There we go. The other That'll camera. work. Yeah. Do it this way? Let's try this camera. <laughs> That's worse. It's All right, let's worse. do the top camera. So this... There you go. Yeah. That is a comparison scientific analysis on an audio precision unit. One line is blue. It's the 007, and, uh, the OP07, and the other is the LM308. And that's the differences in them. I'm sorry, you said there's uh, two lines there. There's two different lines there. Are you saying there's two different lines? There's on the paper. I can't. Here's another knob minute, setting. What? Another knob setting. Where Just is because you have two to do lines? this. Hold on, hold on. Wait. Do you guys see the two lines? Do you see it or not? Uh, yes or no? I don't see the two lines. That means they're the same. Wow. And that's Amazing. just like. And that those specs are like, are, are will be those be available for people to look yeah, at? Yeah, yeah. Cool. The other problem is even if you have two, like I see people shoot them out, hate it. Shootouts are so stupid yeah. from a scientific perspective because you're hearing pot tolerance. You're hearing older caps. You just can't shoot out. You need the one circuit that instantly changes the one part with everything else is controlled. Mm -hmm. Who does that? So we did that with the Packrad, and that's how you get these studies you have way more difference in sound across the 20% differences in pots. So I gave you a white face. I yep. have two or three more. I guarantee serial numbers put them within a few months or at least a year of each other on a couple. They will sound a little different, yep. but every sound is in there. If you just move the stinking pot a little and stop mm -hmm. shooting them out on YouTube like some maniac. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Any other myths? Mm -hmm. This is nice. There's two There's two more that come to mind for me. Yeah. You yeah. said caps. Tantalum caps. Talk to me about tantalum so the very, caps. So the very first rats use tantalum caps. These are little mustard tic-tac-looking mm -hmm. capacitors. Scott Burnham used them because NASA used them, and he said that's cool. <laughs> they were like 10 cents more. And uh, Scott Burnham, 
a huge cred and props to him. He just wanted to make a high quality product. He never was concerned with price. There was some headbutting there with Charlie. Charlie was economical. Um, and you know, it's probably for the good of the business and they butted heads on that. And so Charlie, at some point they got rid of the tantalums and Scott, there's, I have a conversation with him, which he's like, yeah, we switched him out and we, there was no difference. Like he literally says it. And he goes, we kept getting emails and people saying the old ones sounded better. And they went in again and they were like, cause it doesn't make, it's yeah, like, it's yeah. like telling a cook that I don't, it's some, I can't, the analogy is so hard to do cause yeah. it's so dumb. Yep. Like this is different and it's not. And these goes, it's just tolerance in these people. And Scott's like, these people just want to hear a difference. They, yeah. Yeah. It's not true. The electrolytic caps don't sound any different. I'm mm. sorry. Okay. Is there another one? Last one. Who who made my pedal? Was it was it a man named Woodcutter? That might be a woodcutter. Is it a woodcutter? It might be. Yeah, we have a few woodcutters. So woodcutter. Yeah, this we is do. a woodcutter. Yes. So this is a this rat too. Yeah, that's a woodcutter labeled ninety seven woodcutter. So yeah, there's even a pedal called Woodcutter by mm-hmm. Grant. Great guy, big ear. Love the pedal. It's a killer rat variant, like a rat clone. Um, but who is Woodcutter? Why? What's the thing you hear? You're a guitar player. Like, what are yeah, yeah. what are people telling you? They say that the rats built by woodcutter are superior. That's the myth. Yeah, that's just this. That's impossible, right? So in, let's explain why it's impossible. So who is woodcutter? Um, all right, that's woodcutter's back. <laughs> this is, to my knowledge, no one's ever seen him. Wow. Yeah. I don't think so. Yep. So woodcutter was a school teacher and he was married to the girl in the blue shirt. I think her name was Tish. Was mm-hmm. it Tish? Yeah, yep. Tish. And that's Candy there at a production. There this is sometime post ninety one, which line, you know, that's when he built stuff. Late eighties, I believe, and then ninety one on. And that's the vintage reissue, so we know that's why it's post ninety one. So he's sitting there. He's focused. If you look closely, there's a he's got a rat holding roughly twenty rat circuits. He's stuffing them. Probably the reissues. And you see a lot of pedals with a sticker on the pot. So all rat pedals, most rat pedals, I'm actually not sure why some don't, but you'll usually see the pot and you'll see a name and you'll see woodcutter on a sticker. And this was one reason only. When you build a pedal, if you go down the stairs, we have to do similar things. You got to know what, who built something wrong, right? It's a quality control check. So woodcutter is on a ton of pedals. And here's what's crazy. Woodcutter was a school teacher, and Woodcutter just worked when he could part time. But Candy, that girl in the crimson red the shirt, she said he just outbuilt everybody. <laughs> Even at part time, he just murdered everybody's production numbers. He was just super focused. So he's just a dude who actually was like a timber guy. Like he cut a lot of wood, and he they had cutting wood. <laughs> yeah, his name was Doug, and basically this is all in the. There's more about this in the article, but his name was Doug, and he there were a lot of Dougs there, at least two or three, and he just put woodcutter, and they're like, yeah, woodcutter made it wrong, right? But he made so many that we see more of them, and at some point, someone had a better sounding rat. It's not. They just can't remember what the last one they owned sounded like. Yep. There's scientific study that shows if you have a one second lapse of audio, your brain cannot contain the accuracy of how do you like wow. once you hear the silence, wow, like you can't do that. Yep. And so people are making these judgments like, man, I had that rat 12 years ago. Oh my God. Like it's just a good sounding rat because all rats are good sounding. He just made a lot of pedals and the, st- the statistics of seeing a woodcutter from late 80s through the 90s is really high because he was the best builder. He was amazing. He he passed away in an accident. Uh, we'll probably do something fun with this on like a full bio kind of deal. But here he is up close. This is him at a party. That's the first ever photo portrait, I guess, you'll ever – might be the only one you'll ever see. It's <laughs> awesome. That is Woodcutter. And I think we talked about this on our flight back. Um, it's such a disservice to like – wrap this myth around a human who at when we we told certain employees and they laughed they'd never heard this myth yeah, right, right i was explaining to them like people have put him on a pedestal and they're like he would laugh his head off yeah yeah he built from a parts kit what was put in front of him he did not play guitar he did not build circuits he wouldn't have known what a capacitor 
what capacitor to change if you wanted to. Just like it's a disservice to wrap a myth around a really cool dude. He actually gave a lot of time to like uh like underprivileged children. He's a teacher and a ma- let's like remember him for that and not remember right, right. him because of some bogus guitar player myth. Yeah. This is it. This is the That's ultimate it. history of the rap. Yep. It's a lot of pedals. Yep. So um any last words from y'all? I say we do one last jam. Yep. I say we jam on the little rat. Yes. And I say we all okay. use a rat on our instruments. I have a fringe logo on my drums right now, and I say that's how we go out. You have, in a blaze you have of an glory. actual fringe logo? I have an actual fringe logo. <laughs> I have, for all the bass players out there, I'm using a pack rat on my bass. Yes, it works on bass. Nothing else in, ch- in the chain, just the pack rat. I'm going to use the L.A. setting. So let's just so people can hear it. Do yep. your bass tone, then yep. you do a drum tone, and then I'll be ready. That was dry, and here's with the LA setting on the rat. Is that Louie Louie? <laughs> it can be. <laughs> what? Well, give us. So you have an effect mic. You have a mic. Yeah, I have a mic right here. You can actually hear me. Talk to it for a minute. Yeah. Yo. So you have one microphone, a rat, and it's just like a mono effect. Do that one more time. Yeah. That's oh. it. Fire. I feel so much pressure. I also playing. have a little noise gate on, too. And you're using the Q-Sack thingamajig. Q-Sack pedal cracker. Yeah, it lets you put pedals in at line level. Yep. All right. You guys ready? Let me get it. Let me get a tone dialed in, bro. Hold on, hold on. This thing sounds so good to be so small. Thank you, surface mount. Let's do something in D. I'll bull crap around. You ready? What's that? Yeah. Do that with like some some synchronization. This has been great. Um, that's a wrap. Awesome. That's a wrap. If you enjoyed this episode and you hung around, thank you. This is a this is a deep haul. Remember the article. Also, there's all kinds of pack rat videos if you're interested in that. If you know something about rat history, we have a an email address in that article. We're very we want to learn as well. So there's all kinds of stuff that are mysteries. If we have anything wrong and you can prove it, we'll change it on the website and credit you. I think it's pedal history at jchesspedals.com. You can email in. Only do that. Like don't don't tell me about your dog's hair or something. Don't want to hear that. But if you like this, hit like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, and uh, that'll give you notifications of every future episode. In the comments below, let us know what you thought about this. This is crazy. Let us know when you first played a rat, when you first saw a rat, 
when you first played a rat and if you like the rat. I think that's three really good points there. We're done. We dove deep. The Real first deep. ever official, really well done rat history. Yeah. Bye-bye. We're, we're patting ourselves on the back. We are. We're out. We're out.